after I left the Air Force in Desert Storm, uh, there was in that 1993, 91, 92, 93, 94 time frame, a mandate that we needed to do military training more effectively and more efficiently. There was a problem that needed to be solved. Bill and I in those days were both a part of the T6 JPEX program, an Air Force and Navy joint primary air crew training system program. The concept was instead of using jet aircraft, could we do a mission, a training mission, in aerospace, or in, in this particular case, a defense mission of preparing young pilots to become the, the Air Force military pilots or Navy pilots? Could we do that jointly with a turboprop? And that was the mission. That was the problem we were trying to solve. We were trying to save money and do a mission more effectively, saving the taxpayer money and getting a job done, a mission done more effectively. What a great concept, right? <clears throat> and yet, sitting there uh, under this Raytheon contract, this concept mandated by Congress, we had Navy, we had Air Force, we had acquisition people, we had contractor people. I was one of the contractor people. We had people that were experts in aerospace engineering, structural engineering, we had a baseline airplane, and literally years later, and I might say decades later, with committee meetings, I remember one, one of my favorite stories, there were 17 people in a, in a conference room to decide the airplane paint color. <laughs> are, we so, are we solving a problem? Or are we creating one? Boeing is predicting that we need a four-fold increase in the number of pilots in the next 20 years. A four-fold increase. We have 150,000 pilots now. Half of us are retiring in the next five years, and we need 600, in fact, more than 600,000 pilots. Our training fleet is 50 years old. That's not a misquote. 50 years old. We burn the only leaded gas left in the world. Boom is trying to solve a problem by changing the time equation for how we get from one place to another. <coughs> by aerospace is trying to solve a problem. We need new pilots. One of you might say, I would love to be an airline pilot. Great idea. And your first experience is to step out in a 1967 Cessna 152. How's that sound? The most popular airplane of all time is the Cessna 172, about 44,000 of them. Burning leaded out gas, their average age 48.1 years old. I think there's a problem to be solved in training. Electric means about $3 per flight hour to fly, as opposed to $40 or $50 per flight hour with ad gas. That changes everything. The price point on the airplane is also about $100,000 less than, than a trainer, so it's, it's not just an operating cost benefit. And by Aerospace was formed with the focus on innovation with an application, not standing on its own. It's not a research project, it's not a NASA project, it's not a defense project, it's innovation with a purpose. We at Centennial Airport, for the last 10 years, electric airplanes. The Sunflyer prototype that you see there is a three-hour flight time electric airplane. That airplane is designed specifically to solve the problem. It's designed to train pilots. And we're very fortunate to have the support from Jay and the state. <clears throat> we, we've had great support at Centennial Airport. Wonderful people there. 
We've been able to attract industry leadership. Charlie Johnson, the former president of Cessna, she's our president. We have Tom Bowen, the chief engineer from Mooney, as our chief engineer. Innovation in and of itself is not really interesting unless we're trying to solve a problem. 